Hi, welcome to Joel Creates. A lot of people have been using these alarm clocks that gradually turn on a light to wake you up in the morning. My wife has one and, and it's just, it's, it's pretty puny and it doesn't get very bright. So I thought that if it's gonna be a true sun, sun alarm clock, sun lamp, what's it called? Do you remember? So anyways, I decided I'll just build a sun and put it in my bedroom and hook it up to a timer. So here's what I've got for the project. Over 100 light bulbs. These are uh, LED bulbs that I got, most of them from a drugstore where they were on clearance for like 90% off. Copper wire was only 25 bucks. It's 100 feet of 12 gauge copper wire. I got a couple of timers from Goodwill. I'm gonna be using this recycled laminate, probably tabletop countertop. This thing was five bucks. Five dollar foot long. It's longer than a foot, but I can't say five dollar. 56 inch long. As you can see, I already cut some stuff out of it to make a gift for my wife. I wanted to try and stick to materials I had lying around, so we'll go with this. Plus the nice white background makes it more reflective of the light. Not that we're gonna really need it. The obvious way to do this would be to get a bunch of sockets. Just mount them all to a board. The problem is, is that these sockets are, like the cheapest I found them is like a dollar each. And with over 100 bulbs, I don't want to spend $100. I wanted to keep the bulbs intact so that they could be taken out at some point. So I, I, I thought up a way to mount all these light bulbs that I wouldn't have to buy a bunch of sockets and that I'd still be able to remove them so I'm not taking them apart. So I'm keeping them intact, but I'm connecting to all of them at once. So I hopped onto my machining software called CamBam to design the enclosure that would hold all the bulbs and to create the G-code that would run my CNC machine. I had initially wanted to make the enclosure round, like a sun, but it was difficult to densely pack the bulbs and have the pattern of their placement look symmetrical. Also, round designs increased the width of the material needed by at least 6 inches. For these reasons, I went with a simple rectangle. Welcome back. So we'll be able to reuse this piece, which will be nice. This is our spacer piece. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Have this inner circle and then a tiny little edge. That's so that the bulb can fit in. And then this little edge can fit in. And hopefully we'll get a nice straight seal so all the bulbs will line up. Ooh, that is tight. That is tighter than I thought it would be. I did my test on pine. I thought it wouldn't be this tight. Looks like we're gonna have to sand it or something. Let me see what I can do. Yeah. We got a nice little bit of poke through on the back. Take this wire and we'll wrap and then go on to the next one. All right, well, let's make a time lapse of putting all these in because you don't want to sit here and watch it in real time. Here's the back of the bulb board. Here's the frame piece. Goes like that. Put a thin sheet over the back. You may have noticed the two different types of light bulbs. One's with a white insulator and one's with a black insulator. On the box, they look the same. Obviously, we have two slightly different revisions of the same bulb. Once the bare copper wires were wound around the backs of the bulbs and hot glued in place, I tested the bulbs one at a time by carefully probing the live contacts on the centers of the backs of the bulbs. Normally, I wouldn't use hot glue in an application like this, but for cost savings, convenience, and removability, it was the best candidate. I then soldered jumper wires to the live contacts. These wires came from an old car wiring harness and were about 18 gauge, since they would need to carry less current. The amount of heat needed to wick the solder to the metal contacts on the backs may have caused some issues later. This was fun, so we're gonna plug it in and see how it goes. He's ready to blow some fuses, yeah. This is, this is safe. I'm gonna go every other. Cause I didn't wire half of them. 
That's why I'm feeling smart. I lied before, the wiring wasn't done. I forgot to jumper to half the bulbs, but now I have, and here they're jumper. Why are some of you not working? 12 bulbs aren't working. Man, you can feel the heat coming off of this. Oh, that's hot. It is, that's hot. It is warmer than I anticipated. Well, I'll try again and see if I can get this working. Peels right off. Let's see how we did. Maybe this will work. I thought I replaced all the dead ones. Ah. Uh, Wait, is that nine? Are more like dying every moment? Oh, one of one of them's catching. What? That one just died. Are these just really crappy light bulbs? <laughs> Figure this out. All right, I am bleeding now. Replaced several bulbs that weren't working for whatever reason. Yeah. We're getting ready to uh, let's just let's see what we can do. Woo! Yeah, baby. So I wired the input. Um, so let's put it together. It's time to play Guess That Thing, where I engrave something on my CNC machine, and you have to try and guess what it is. Did you figure it out? If you guessed aluminium flacken, you're close enough. test out the wake-up potential of this mini sun. I know some of you have probably been thinking this whole time that this setup is a bit impractical, um, but I'm confident that by the end of this you're going to realize that uh, that those concerns, while valid, are just unfounded. Good night. Do you... Well, good night. Four, three, two, one. Zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Okay, you were right. It's impractical. Honestly, I don't think I could ever sleep knowing that there was a, a ticking light bomb two feet from my face. And it's probably not the smartest thing to do for safety reasons. I think what I really wanted deep down was a super powerful light to play with. Maybe make some light related puns. That's when I had a bright idea. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, in all seriousness, I think the only way to do justice to this ludicrously luminous lamp, fiendishly fluorescing fixture, the only way to really do this thing justice is to, is to take it out into the country at night and see how it performs as an actual sun. 
So let's do that. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more cool videos from Joel Creates, uh, consider subscribing. I'll catch you next time.